now we get into our second recipe. And this is a creamy cauliflower miso soup. So this smooth and creamy vegan soup. So it's, it's great for people who um, are vegetarian or looking for more plant protein options. Um, this soup is an exquisite pairing of two nutrient-rich foods. So the cauliflower actually contains fiber and several health-protective compounds that are considered to be anti-inflammatory. And the silken tofu is an excellent source of plant protein. Um, it, soy is actually one of the few plant uh, proteins that has all the essential amino acids uh, which essentially are building blocks to make protein. So the addition of silken tofu to this recipe adds more protein. And if the tofu, um, depending on if it was set in calcium or not, it could also provide additional calcium and uh, vitamin K. Awesome. All right, yeah, so we're gonna jump into this soup recipe. Again, going with that batch cooking theme, um, trying to set up uh, sort of leftovers and, and meal options for, you know, when, when you just don't have the time, especially if you're looking after loved ones, um, might not all have the time to always cook, you know, every single day. So setting up these meals in advance um, can be extremely helpful. Uh, so we're going to go with cauliflower. We've made a lot of soups in, in, throughout the years. Um, we're going to make a really nice creamy cauliflower soup, and we're leaning on frozen. So we're actually going to be using frozen cauliflower um, because it is very versatile. It's very convenient. Uh, so, you know, all the prep is already done. Um, it's going to save you a lot of time. Um, the um, storage life is a lot longer, much longer. You know, sometimes we're guilty of buying produce um, and then just letting it sit and change all kinds of colors and textures in the fridge. So. Um, this is a, a great option because it's, it's shelf life is a lot longer. It's usually a lot more budget friendly as well. So we definitely love leaning on frozen. And regards in terms of the nutrition, Daniela, you know, you know, yeah, definitely. So uh, frozen vegetables and fruits have come a long way, and the technology has become so sophisticated that when they flash freeze the fruits and vegetables. It's at their peak of nutrition, and that locks in that level of nutrition um, into the fruit and vegetable. Um, so it's excellent to have on hand in your freezer. And if you don't live with your loved one, let's say you know, you're a family member or your parent or your child, you can always stock up their freezer. So when you're over there and you need to make something quick, like either you've already made it and brought it, but to have some of these uh, foods on hand at their place uh, will make it easy for you to make some of these uh, delicious and easy meals. This soup, actually. All right, so we're gonna start the soup. Uh, we've got our pot, just a medium pot here. Um, a little bit of olive oil in here, and I have it on a medium heat. And I'm just gonna throw in some aromatics. So you can use whatever you want, you know, the classic onion, celery, if you wanna throw in carrots. I'm just adding garlic. Just very simply, and all I've done um, is crushed it with the side of my knife. I'm gonna throw it in um, just to get a little bit of color, get those aromas going. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add my frozen cauliflower. So just want to minute it on the garlic. Um, I know we've talked about it before, but maybe we'll, maybe Danielle, you wanna to touch on the cool it all tip. Oh. The garlic. Sure, sure. So um, if you crush the garlic and let it sit for 10 minutes, it allows the uh, antioxidant called allicin, so a specific antioxidant that uh, also has anti-inflammatory properties. So uh, if you let it sit for 10 minutes, then add it to the heat, it does not get destroyed by the heat. So um, that is a little trick that we like to say. It is, you know, chop them up a little bit earlier, have them ready, and then you're adding a little bit more nutrition bang to your soup. Beautiful. So yeah, just a little bit of color, which I'm already starting to get. You can see here, bring it a little closer to the pot. And the idea with this recipe is, again, this is 
so it's very, very quick. So very little fuss. You just want to get some flavor so you can see a little bit of color on the garlic, which is great. Just softening it up, it will make a lot easier to blend. And then I'm going to go ahead and add my frozen cauliflower. Um, you're going to get a little bit of a sizzle. sizzle. You don't have to defrost your frozen veg in advance. So directly from the freezer, right into the pot. And then we'll cover it with some liquid. Now, to make it really easy for you, you can absolutely just add uh, water to this. If you want to add some more flavor, you can definitely use a veg stock, a chicken stock. Um, we're, we have a veg stock here, which I'm going to put in, and just a cover. And we want this to simmer for about five minutes. And to you, Daniela, while it simmers. Sure, yeah. So um can talk a lot more about our cauliflower. So I know we've been you've been seeing them being used for pizza crusts. Um and uh for people who are sensitive to gluten, it has been used quite a bit as an option. Um, cauliflower actually has almost every vitamin and mineral your body needs in it, as well as the fiber. And the fiber in the um, cauliflower helps to uh, feed the healthy bacteria in our gut as well. So there's this cool connection between the uh, friendly bacteria in our gut and our mental health, um, and also with our immune system. So using cauliflower uh, and also some other cruciferous vegetables like broccoli um, is a great way of uh, keeping your uh, bacteria in your gut healthy um, for yourself and for your loved ones. And then we know that uh, Jeremy, we're adding silken tofu to this dish. Um, he hasn't added it yet, but I thought I would just take this minute to kind of dispel some of the fears around having tofu. Um, and, you know, there's, again, it was that discussion about the phytoestrogens, that it contains estrogen and that it could have a similar negative effect if, on your body if you have uh, breast cancer, prostate cancer. But the research has found that although the chemical looks the same, the activity or the function of the phytoestrogen, phyto means plant, so the estrogen in the plant is much, much weaker and it doesn't have that negative effect. And in, in fact, <laughs> effect, effect, I know I'm getting, I'm getting mixed up with my words. In fact, it can actually um, help uh, promote um, um, protection against developing cancer. So don't fear having tofu or soy um, as a food in the diet, okay? I'm done. I, Jeremy, you look like you're ready to, to blend, I think. No? Not, not yet, but what we want to do, I'll show you what's going on here. So we brought it up to simmer. We just want to cook it until it's soft. So it might take a couple of minutes. The frozen cauliflower doesn't take too long. Uh, so that's you know, another advantage, is it's, it's fairly quick. If you're using fresh, um, you just want to cook it until it is uh, nice and tender. So you can take a knife and sort of poke it into the cauliflower. And if it comes out easily, then you know that it's it is uh, ready to to go. Um, we just want it to blend uh, so that it's nice and creamy. And to add to that creaminess, like Daniela was mentioning, was we're going to be using some of that silken tofu, um, which is going to give it just this really really nice texture. So for a full bag, I added a full bag of cauliflower in there. I'm going to be adding about a cup of silken tofu in there, a little bit of lemon for acidity, a 
this is going to really help to bump up the flavor quite a bit. Especially with, I mean, cauliflower, it's, it's you know, not the most punchy flavor, I guess. I don't want to say bland. Be kind to the cauliflower, yeah. Jeremy. <laughs> but sometimes we have to just add a little bit more just to, especially if, if you need an extra bump in flavor, um, the lemon's going to really help. And then our other ingredients. So we're going to be using some miso. So miso paste is essentially fermented soybeans. Probably heard it commonly in miso soup. Um, it is a, a really nice way to bump, punch up flavor. And it's very high in that sort of umami that we talked about it before, um, which is sort of uh, a cue in for your savory taste. Um, and it can really help to elevate the flavor of, of your dish. So um, we're going to go ahead and add about a tablespoon directly into the blender. The stock, the liquid from the uh, the soup is going to help to dissolve that as well. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to check on this cauliflower since it's ready to go. We're looking good. So we have our silken tofu, lemon, miso, and then we're going to go ahead and add our cauliflower. And we cooked it directly in the liquid that's going to go into the soup. So we're really not losing. Jeremy, I missed the liquid that you used. Was it a broth or? Yes, just a veg a broth. OK. It's just a veg broth, but you can definitely, because of the miso, you're, you're creating sort of its own little soup base, a broth base. So you could just use water. That's what you have access to. Keep it simple. And if um, if uh, your loved one has a, a weak immune system, is there something we can use instead of the miso? I, I know the miso is great and it has that umami flavor, but um, is there something else that could be used? That uh, it's going to just add like a punch of flavor. So any any other um, boost of flavor you can definitely add. You can throw in some like dried mushrooms that would give it some really nice umami. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely again like a, a broth, some sort of veg broth or chicken broth is going to help mm -hmm. with that too. I, I suppose the the other thing too, sometimes people don't want a lot of flavor. So um, the great thing to know is that if, if your loved one is having trouble with too many flavors and they want something that's a little bit more neutral, um this would provide that uh without adding that um the the punch of flavor but then of course if it's for you you want that punch of flavor so go ahead and put that in yeah yeah definitely the you can adjust as needed um but again from boiling you know simmering a bag of frozen cauliflower with a couple of aromatics you can have this really nice creamy soup in uh Pretty much under 10 minutes. It shouldn't take too long. So <laughs> I'm using a blender. For ease, you can use a hand blender and you can bring it to your pot. I know it's a tool we love to use um, and blend it up directly in the pot. So you can absolutely do that. I just want to show you a different version. Just in terms of safety, if you're using hot liquid in the blender, you want to make sure that you take the top off. Uh, you don't want to trap that steam. Soup will be everywhere. Trust me, you'll thank me later. Um, and then just put a, a dishcloth on top, and that way you can sort of control any splash back, but you're also releasing, helping to release the steam at the same time. Um, and you start off on low as well, and then you can work your way up. Maybe I'll mute myself, Daniela. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So while uh, he's blending up the soup, I wanted to tell you a little bit more about foods helping foods. So this, the tofu um, has iron. It has a, a plant form of iron, which is a little bit more difficult for the body to absorb. 
But because the cauliflower um, is high in vitamin C, vitamin C will help absorb the iron from the, from the tofu. Probably about 50% more of the iron will be absorbed because you have that rich vitamin C food in there as well. Mm -hmm. And I cannot, um, what's the word? Uh, it, it's so important what Jeremy has explained about removing the top to the blender because he has told me of so many mishaps um, when that top is on. So definitely remember to do that. Um, you don't want soup all over the place. I don't know if anyone watching has had any soup accents. Hopefully you haven't. All right. We're ready to plate this up. It's, it smells fantastic. Here's what you want to just adjust for seasoning. I need. I'll use my ladle. So that's not just to show you how like just silky and creamy this is. If you're not a big fan of cauliflower, like this is probably a nice way to enjoy it or at least start. So again, and what's what's really sorry. interesting cool about it is that it's creamy, right? So you, at first blush, you might think, oh, I can't have cream, I can't have high fat. But to know that the creaminess is actually coming uh, from the cauliflower um, and with the silken tofu, but cauliflower adds its own creaminess, doesn't it, Jeremy? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, you get this really, really nice, silky consistency. And with the veg, like veg stock, I mean, it's, it's a vegan, dish if that is something you want and so that's delicious on its own really really nice um if you want to bump up the presentation or all about presentation eating with your eyes you can throw in i have some just some different toasted seeds um in here so i like some sesame seeds and chia it's a little mix we'll just add just a little bit on top this will give it some nice texture. So you have a little bit of contrast between creamy and crunchy seeds. Try not to make a mess. We'll do it gently so you can see the light blinding it out. But there we have really nice, very quick and simple creamy cauliflower in miso soup. With a little Beautiful. Seeds. And sorry. Sorry, I was interrupting you to say it was beautiful and just wanted to throw in again that soup is a fluid, so it's a great way of getting hydration as well. So excellent yeah. work, Jeremy. I'm and definitely going to make that recipe. Yeah, I love that tip. I love the fluid tip. Uh, I know it's something that uh, it helps me. It helps encourage me because I, I don't definitely don't get enough water in, but uh Soups, smoothies, those all count as well, right? So they do, they do, they count. This one, um, again, freezes really, really well, just like the other recipes that we're making today. So um, it's great to make a bigger batch um, and then portion it out. Um, I know we probably showed it before, but a cool little tip with freezing soups is it's definitely my favorite tip. Yeah, these uh, little muffin tins, these it's like silicone ones now. You can get um, half cup and full cup measures. You pour it, you ladle your soup out, and then freeze it solid, and then you can pop out the little soup pucks, and then you throw those into your freezer bag, and that way you have your portion set up. So whether you're, you know, you need to make a meal, warm up a meal for your loved one that you're caring for, it's accessible, it's easy to go. Throw it in the microwave, throw it in the pot, warm it up in minutes and you're good to go. Or for yourself as well. Like Danielle mentioned, you can know, keep your energy up and to satiate yourself. You have that quick meal that you've already put work into. Um, and yeah, there's our separate recipe.